Hi everyone, welcome to episode 10 of the Card Combo Show. The cards we're going to be taking a look at this week are the Opus 11 Legend Yuna, Old Man Garland, the Thunder God Sid, or as he's better known, Orlando, the Shocker, Shock Trooper, Tuna and Cheese Melt, Melter Gemini, and Luca. Alright, let's get to it. So Yuna is powerful in so much that she allows you to link summons together for only a discard for her S. So a Judo Marajidu, it sets up excellently for Yuna to use her S. Simply by paying 5, you've gained not only a backup, but cast a summon and you can trigger Yuna's S using this. Doga can be funny, but ultimately it would have to be against a niche deck to make the most of it. Either way, if you manage to cast two big summons on the cheap with Yuna and her S, and also break some backups, that's a win. You can pair with Alexander and Hecatonshire as well for even more devastating results. Uh, similarly, with Terra, you can cast summons aplenty and keep your opponent's forwards dull. If you're you if you're on a more earth focused summon deck, maybe using Radio as well. Uh, casting summons all about the place and getting 3k buffs sounds pretty decent to me using Graviton. Garnet has a similar jig, but buffing your whole lineup as opposed to just one forward. And as a bonus, she's awkward to get rid of your opponent, but buffing or casting plenty of summons and buffing your whole forward lineup is pretty good. Uh, right, so onto the summons that you can actually combo with Yuna's S. So first it's worth mentioning that Yuna's S ability will stack once you cast the summon, and as the stack resolves in reverse, it means that the last thing you add to the stack will happen first. So while the big summons are going to have more kick to them, make sure that the combos are happening in the right order. So for example, Shiva and Zalera. Zalera into Shiva, or Zalera into Shiva, sorry, can be disruptive if your opponents have right forwards. Combo with backup Terra mentioned earlier for extra dulling. Again, as mentioned earlier, Shiva will resolve first, making things dull, ready for Zalera to break, so you have to make sure you get things in the right order. Titan in Diablos means that you can buff your forward and have Diablo set something to 4k first, you get a card, and then hopefully your forward gets a buff, whilst their forward goes down to 4k at least, and you will take it out. Not too bad for just a 1s discard effectively. Now here's something special, and be wary of any damage cannot be reduced effects like Ku Chaspel, and uh, excuse me, the most value is playing off an Ajido play, but if you can combo Medine to deal 9k to everything, and then Leviathan to stop all summon damage to your forwards, that should be a pretty nasty blow to your opponents if they have a big field. Deal 9k to them and nothing to you for having played Ajido Marajidu and a discard for the S, it's pretty good. Lastly, casting Hades and following up with a Glazier Lablas, so Hades will dull something out, returns it back up and makes your opponent discard, and Glaz can either dull another forward, freeze the forward that will become dull when Hades resolves, or just pile on the pain with another discard. Right, more ice nastiness, sorry. Garland 9, he's always good for some early gameplay, uh, restricting your opponent's ability to build whilst you lay on some damage with him, you know, freezing out their backups and whatnot. So Bartandalus, or Bartandalus, how you pronounce it, uh, can freeze out all your opponent's backups that they leave active, uh, but they will ultimately want to keep them active so that you, if you play some form of tax, they'll also need to use that, but you know, they get frozen out, so they'll have to discard from hand. Kadaj and Yazu, so you gotta love, hate, love the Remnant engine. Uh, they can dull and freeze backups, forwards, whatever you pick, so Garland can just kind of capitalize on that, really. Enough said. Sid Randall and Babus. <laughs> These guys are great with Garland because whatever they do, Garland still gets to free something. And if your opponent play, pays out of hand, it's just like a discard mechanic, effectively. That's all tax is, really, an optional discard. But having Sid Randall me make your opponent have to think, well, I either pay with the backup to make sure it doesn't become dull, um, or they just leave their forward to become dull. So either way, they've got a dull backup or a dull forward. Which then, when your turn comes around, you can use Garland to freeze whatever they didn't pick, effectively. Yeah, Undead Princess and Flander, a similar sort of deal here, just they get to add tax on to even more tax. Um, I guess Flander is a little bit more uh, variable because you can use him whenever you see fit and you can ultimately have three of them, and that will just be nightmarish for your opponent. 
Yasma, so Yasma's funny because obviously if you stack it in the correct order, you can have it so that you use Garland's ability and pay the one ice and then use Yasma to rectify all your backups so you've managed to free something with Garland but not actually lost any value of your backups. Umaro, so <laughs> having Garland being able to freeze out one of your opponent's characters but then Umaro also freezing out one of your opponent's forwards every turn can be quite devastating. Combo with Snow, so you attack with Umaro, that dulls out one of their forwards, then Umaro freezes it as well. It does more ice grossness really. And then you got Kadaj. So Kadaj would enter your opponent's, or uh, sorry, enter your field at the end of your opponent's turn, which then sets up for Garland to be able to freeze that forward. Um, so even if they have something that's brave, or they have they didn't attack with it, it still becomes dull through Kadaj. All right. So Orlando. Um, he can deal 3k simply on attacking, it's a reasonable enough ability, he just suffers from being a high costed card. Uh, if you have Desh on 3 points of damage, him being first strike and dealing 2k on attack can be a pain and a total of 5k board wipe when both these guys attack can also be fairly brutal, can get rid of um, a fair few smaller forwards and generally if your opponent is swelling their field they will be smaller, so that can be quite annoying. Ramu, so you can just attack with Orlando pay 1 CP, use Ramu to then effectively have done 10k something, I mean that should break pretty much everything. <laughs> so Vermilion Bird, Lassie, Kaituna and Ifrita, so you could play Vermilion Bird, Lassie to play Ifrita, deal a 4k board wipe to your opponent and then attack with Orlando to buff that up to a 7k board wipe. If you wanted to, you could also use the Summoner Backup, which increases all damage taken by 1k, so if Rita would then be dealing 5k to your opponent's board, which Orlando would then deal a further 4k, which is, well, that's pretty rank, that's 9k to your opponent's board. Soldier Third Class, so if you attack with Orlando, you've dealt 3k, that effectively means that the Soldier Third Classes, of which you can have 3 on your field, become 8k First Strikers. And Maya. Maya being able to give Orlando plus a thousand and first strike or any other lightning forward but probably Orlando. Making him an 8k first striker means that he effectively becomes an 11k first striker whenever he attacks. Fina, I mean you play Fina onto a field, you deal 5k to all your opponents forward to attack with Orlando, deal a further 3, that's an 8k board wipe. And Basilisk, I love this card. So you play Basilisk onto the field, choose a forward, deal at 4k, you attack with Orlando, you deal a further 3k to hopefully kill a 7k forward, and then uh, you put Basilisk into the break zone to break anything else that Orlando hit with his attack ability. And <laughs> Snow and Angel Penance. Now, Snow and Angel Penance isn't exactly a new combo, but it's still worth mentioning with Orlando. Normally it'd be paired up with something like Colossus, uh, but yeah, you attack with Orlando, you get to dull something out, deal 3k to their board, attack with Angel Penance, again you can uh, move something out of the way with Snow, but also probably break something because it's already been damaged through Orlando. Okay, Shocker, Shock Trooper, when Shock Trooper attacks, choose one forward opponent controls, break it and break Shock Trooper. So he's not a fantastic card, but I've always thought he's a fun little card to try and get to work anyway. So something like Sabin is what you really go to to make him work properly. You can use any uh, cannot be broken ability, but Sabin's one that I prefer to use. So you play Sabin onto the field, you attack with Sabin, make it so Shock Trooper can't be broken. You then attack with Shock Trooper, you get to break one of your opponent's forwards, while Shock Trooper stays alive. Uh, you can combo with Snow as well, so that because both of these abilities are on attack, it means that if you've got Snow there, you attack with Sabin or you attack with Shock Trooper, you move their things out of the way, and Shock Trooper just kills them outright. And that's another good thing about Shock Trooper is that it's, the restriction was meant to be that Shock Trooper breaks, but you can pick a forward of any cost, something like Yasmat, or if you have a way to get around his cancel ability, um, Fail Thanos. So Shock Trooper can just break things. Amadar, so you could attack with Shock Trooper, break your opponent's forward, but also break Shock Trooper. Amadar then doubles in power, which then becomes quite threatening for your opponent to have to deal with. Archangel, so if you've got Archangel down and Shock Trooper, if you've 
like you did earlier, like I mentioned earlier, with the sub, and if you can make so Shock Trooper cannot be broken, your opponent then's got a lot to deal with because Shock Trooper's attacking, breaking a forward, Archangel's attacking, potentially dealing you two points of damage. They have got a basic, they've got to decide what they want to get rid of, Archangel, Shock Trooper, or maybe even just Sabin. And then you could be running some weird little ice um, standard unit deck where you've got DGS Trooper First Class buffing Shock Trooper up to a 10k. So you could be, again, making him not break from Serban's ability. And another good thing about Shock Trooper is the fact that if your opponent doesn't have any forwards, they won't break when they attack. So if you've got a couple of Shock Troopers down but they've got no forwards, just keep swinging. Alright, Melted Gemini. He's a bit of a weird card, mostly due to the fact that it affects your field as much as your opponent's, and it depends a lot on what your opponent's using as well. Uh, now, Remedy, I've picked her more as kind of like to represent an idea more than Remedy herself, but the idea is create barriers. Melty Gemini is a fairly big barrier, and a lot of decks can rely on just that. Even something like Waka or Bro for that 1k buff can really swing a game for you. So, having something to have, adding more things onto the pile of things that they have to consider when you know that if Remedy's down, they have to think, Oh, I want to cast a summon, I want to use this Devout, but because Remedy's there, do they have the two to be able to pay to make sure it doesn't break? Uh, Leviathan, so yeah, obviously Melt Gemini means that things can't be buffed, but that doesn't mean you can't reduce their forwards power. So using something like Leviathan or Bismarck to half their power, or even uh, Kagnazo to play him to then, again, lower their power. Pain in Riku, so more like I was saying about earlier with uh, Remedy, is just creating barriers for your opponent to have to deal with. Having Pain in Riku that can't be targeted by summons and abilities, and you know, not being able to buff your own, uh, that your opponent not be able to buff their forwards to create a wall to block these two from can become an issue quickly. Uh, Cecil, so another good thing about Cecil is that he creates a lot of problems for your opponent because if they're dealt damage, uh, if your forwards are dealt damage by a summon or an ability, the damage becomes zero. And obviously, a big draw for Cecil is that he would buff all your forwards by a 1k, but that doesn't apply because of Melted Gemini. But even still, if your opponent can't buff their forwards and you're making it so that your forwards don't take damage from summons or abilities, it means that they're having to rely on their forwards to get rid of your forwards. And generally, that means blocking attacking. And if no one can buff their forwards, then that means that if you're losing a forward, there's a good chance they're losing a forward as well. Uh, so, yeah, a good way to get around Melty Gemini is just have above curve forwards. So, Garland, he costs three, but he's a 9k first strike. That's nuts. And in water, you've got a lot of forwards that you're, or a lot of cards that you're willing to sacrifice. And Garland to the field, put something to the break zone, a cost three. So that could be Porum, or it could be a Viking. You know, you're still getting something back from it, a lot of value from playing Garland. And your opponent can't buff their forwards, but you've got a 9k first striker. That's quite something to deal with. Sefi, so your opponent may want to try and buff their forwards to get around Sefi's attack to then dull all forwards of a pair, excuse me, uh, with 8,000 power or less. Sefi's just going to keep swinging every time unless they've paid a lot for a big forward, which even then you can still reduce their power through something like Leviathan mentioned earlier. Sefi can become a troublesome forward for your opponent to have to deal with. Emperor, again with the barriers, that's just a disgusting little combo. Make it so your opponent can't buff their forwards, and also make it so they can't use special um, or action abilities. I mean, you're starting to limit their options quite heavily at that point. And Hein as well, it does require a discard, but again he's above um, curve, being a 9k and only a 4 CP cost, but you can discard a card, name an element during this turn. Hein cannot be chosen by summons or abilities of the named element, and if Hein is dealt damage by a summon or an ability of the named element, damage becomes zero instead. So you just create so many barriers that your opponent just doesn't know how to deal with things. Generally, people's decks have an answer to one or two of these kind of barriers, but to have to account for so many can really wreck your opponent's deck. And Luca, uh, she's one of my favorite cards from Opus 7, I think. The fact that she can play any backup or a backup of any element that costs three or less at any point, so even on your opponent's turn, and play it onto the field, that's so useful. So mid-previa, you could just, your opponent has 
maybe they want to attack with something before they go to attack phase, break Luca, bring him mid Previa, and deal a total of 9k damage to an active forward. That will kill most things, and you know, if you're mono earth, your opponent definitely won't be expecting it. Similar sort of thing, maybe your opponent has attacked with something with a 4, a, a four CP or less forward. Um, you just crack Luca to bring a masked one, and forward's gone. Botanist, so you can use this as a nice little combo to be able to use an S, break Luca to get Botanist to get that S card back. So let's go hypothetically say, I don't know, Lock. You've used Lock's S. Actually, no, Lock would be a bad example because I just make him so he can't be blocked. But, um, Vincent then, let's say Vincent, you use Vincent's S and you then break Luca, bring in Botanist to get Vincent's S back out of the break zone and use his S again. That's disgusting. White Mage, your opponent casts Phoenix and you're like, ah, I don't think so. You play, use Luca's ability, bring in White Mage, just ping that forward that they wanted to recur into the removed game zone. Uh, and it's also nice because you can pay the one for its second ability to again remove something from their break zone. Bard, your opponent could have attacked with a couple of times and then at the end of your opponent's turn you just bring in Bard to then freeze out some of their forwards and then at the beginning of your turn you can still use his dull and break ability to dull and freeze something else if you needed to. Seymour, your opponent attacks with something big and you just need to get it gone. You then break Luca put Seymour onto the field and you go find that maybe seven cost Odin or six cost Atomos to find a, to break a dull forward. You're, you've got to take the damage, but at least you're breaking the thing, getting rid of, I don't know, Fel Thanos or something really troublesome. Kate Sith, maybe your opponent has played Reagan to get a forward that you really don't want them playing back to hand. Use Luca to play Kate Sith to just make sure that card is removed from the game. You, they get to draw a card, but you've got rid of that forward that would ultimately be quite problematic. And here's the most disgusting player of all time. Uh, Chalinka and Vincent, you don't really need Luca to be able to do this, but it still can surprise your opponent because if you're on Mono Earth and you've got Luca and Vincent, you can say you're at 5 damage and you're ready to attack with Vincent, you use Vincent's S twice, and you can do that, it's been confirmed by Kageyama. So you can have his damage 5 Chaos S ability twice, so you will have a 13k first strike uh, Vincent, and when Vincent attacks choose one character, break it, so that would mean they would, he, I mean they've gained that twice, so he can break two things on attack. You then crack Luca to bring Chalinka onto the field. Vincent's now brave and first strike at 13k. He can attack twice and break two things per attack. So you can attack twice with a 13k first strike brave Vincent breaking a total of four characters and dealing two points of damage to your opponent. I mean, that's just nuts. It, your opponent can have two forwards. You attack with Vincent, break two, those two forwards. You deal them a point of damage. You attack again. You break two of their backups and you deal them a point of damage. That is just a crazy amount of offense. All right, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. Uh, if you've got any cards that you'd like me to cover in future videos, make sure to leave them in the comments below and let me know about any weird or wonderful combos that you've come up with as well. Uh, follow me on Twitter at ChocoBilly92. I'll see you guys in the next video.